Hey guys, what's up? Today I am back with This Week in Tech. It's not actually called This Week in Tech anymore. It's now called Rise Tech Weekly. And basically I give you all the news stories of the week that I posted on my website. I may not give them all, but I'm going to give the best and most valid ones as of right now. So let's begin and I'm going to give you my first news story of the week starting from last Saturday. So with 2012 rolling in, we also are going to have slimmer devices and what I'm going to be talking about is Ultrabooks. Yes, Ultrabooks have been a common thing lately. It's been they've been coming out a lot more lately and at the Consumer Electronics Show, the Ultrabooks seem to be taking over many of the electronics as with the tablets. So with the Ultrabooks, I specifically made an article earlier this week about the Toshiba 14-inch Ultrabook, which will be coming out in possibly June of 2012. It will feature one 3.0 USB port, which is not so common on current laptops, and it will also feature the common USB 2.0 port. And this is going to be going for well under a thousand, according to uh, Toshiba. So. What do you guys think about these Ultrabooks? Do you think this is just going to be a little phase like the netbooks? Or do you think Ultrabooks are going to be the next big thing? Personally, I think Ultrabooks will make it big though as long as they're not like netbooks and they run slower processors with less RAM and everything like that. But give me your guys' thoughts in the comments below. So the one big hit in the market these past few years has of course been the tablets. And specifically, let's talk about one tablet that has been shown off at CES this week, and that is the Toshiba Excite 10.1 inch tablet. It is claiming to be the thinnest tablet ever. It's not yet released, but it is coming in at 7.7 .7 millimeters, which is 0.9 millimeters smaller than the other thinnest tablet, which would happen to be the Samsung Galaxy tablet. The Toshiba Excite is actually going to have a dual core processor and it is going to be running on 1.2 gigahertz so it really isn't wrapped up to what all the newer tablets are going to be because many are, are upgrading to quad-core processors by now. It is also claiming to be running Android 3.2 Honeycomb so it's not upgraded to Ice Cream Sandwich so it is not really up to date so I don't know why they're releasing this because many Android tablets that have been coming out lately are working like crap and they need to work on them more and put them all up to uh, maybe ice cream sandwich. This tablet will have 64 gigabytes of internal storage so you're never going to have to worry about running out of storage on the device because 64 gigabyte is plenty unless you have a lot of music. It will have a 5 megapixel camera on the back and on the front for video conferencing or something like that it will have a 3 megapixel camera which isn't really great but it does meet the iPad but the next iPad is probably expected to do an upgrade with that. Since it is running an Android operating system Flash is compatible so that is a plus compared to the iPad but it does lack movies and applications so the iPad is probably better in a way a lot better. The pricing will start out at $529 for the 16 gigabyte and the 32 gigabyte will be $599. For more info about this tablet, refer to the description below for a link. And while we're already on the topic about tablets, let's talk about the Acer Isarnia A510 tablet, which has actually just been released, not released, but shown off at CES 2012. It is said to be running Android 4.0, which would be Ice Cream Sandwich, so it is up to date operating system wise. It is also going to be running a quad core chip. It is going to be running the Nevada Tegra 3. But the camera is not so impressive. It has a 5 megapixel camera on the back with a 2 megapixel front facing camera. An HDMI slot can be found on the side of the tablet so it can be hooked up onto the TV if you want to watch movies or whatever you want to do on the tablet. And it also does have a spot for an SD card so it is going to have 3G and 4G capabilities. The price is said to be affordable so they are thinking between the 250 and 400 range but there has been many rumors pointing to $250 so this will be affordable and you'll get a good tablet. 
If you want more info on the Acer Isania tablet, then please go to the link in the description below. Now let's talk about Gorilla Glass. They actually unveiled their newest version of Gorilla Glass. It's called Gorilla Glass 2. They unveiled it at CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, this past week. And it is actually a lot stronger. People were pounding on it with hammers and it would not make more than a dent on that Gorilla Glass. And this new Gorilla Glass is also supposed to be slimmer, provide brighter images, and have greater touch sensitivity. So it is possible that the new Apple products will sport the new Gorilla Glass. It is also possible that the iPad 2 will include Gorilla Glass because they said within the next month the new Gorilla Glass will be implanted into more products. And if we are correct, March is going to be the release for the iPad 3, so may it be in there? We don't know, but it is possible. So the latest update with the A5 jailbreak is that Pod2G, he actually says that there should be nothing left blocking the way to unjailbreak the A5 devices, but he says there is no estimated time, so this could be a matter of days like he says, or it could be a few more weeks because... We just don't know because he's been saying for about a month now that it could be released in a few days or next week or whatever. So it's just a matter of waiting and we should just be happy that he's releasing a jailbreak and he's doing this all off donations. He's not really making much money off jailbreaking the A5 devices. And sooner or later the A6 jailbreak will be released possibly with the iPad 3. So he's going to have to work on the A6 jailbreak too. And he is working right now with the team of jailbreakers they formed earlier this week or the past week. And they have been all working together to find the jailbreak. And it might be here and it's possible this weekend or early next week it could be released. Now earlier this week iOS 5.1 Beta 3 was released to developers. And if you want to get that iOS 5.1 Beta 3 early if you don't have a jailbreaking device then you can go down in the description below and you can find a link to my blog where you can download all the IPSW files. But what is included on this iOS 5.1 Beta 3 is some error fixes and general fixes here. Like on your iCloud photo stream, you're now going to be able to delete individual photos right from your device and it will take it off a of photo stream. And it also has some minor bug fixes such as with the setup assistant when you're setting up your iPhone or iPod. And on the springboard lock screen, you might have got an error where you bring up the camera button by double clicking on the home button and then your lock, your lock screen would basically freeze up they fixed that error for good there was also some other fixes but that has to do within the coding and you guys probably don't even care about that because you never will really see it at all it's just for developers and if you are an iPhone 4s user you will be happy because iOS beta 3 5.1 beta 3 actually includes the toggle 3g button so you're not going to be able to go into your devices settings and network settings and you're going to be able to turn on the 3G. This is good because the only option you have right now is turning off data completely. And you're going to have the option to turn off 3G like you would be able to on older iPhones. And the reason this is like really good is because you can turn off 3G and you will still have access to getting notifications and everything from online. Because when you turn off data completely, it also turns off your 2G and Edge networks. Now also in iOS 5.1 beta 3, the hackers did find an indication that it does support quad-core processors while the other iOS versions did not support quad-core, they supported up to dual-core. And what this means is that iOS 5.1 is going to support quad-core processors which would be the A6 chip and the A6 chip is rumored to be in the iPad 3. So it is possible that the iPad 3 is set to be released in either February or March. And there has been rumors that February 24th, Steve Jobs' birthday, that is when the iPad 3 will be released. Now a blog based in Japan is saying that the iPad 3 has begun production and that it is slightly thicker than the iPad 2. The iPad 3 will be set for an early March release. For more info on what I think the iPad 3 is going to include, please go in the description below and I will have a YouTube video which I actually made the other day. 
Also in recent news, T-Mobile, basically the only carrier, big carrier in the United States that doesn't have the iPhone, may be able to have the next generation iPhone, which is possibly going to be the iPhone 5 or iPhone 6. This is because T-Mobile uses AWS bands to transmit their 3G signals and the old iPhones didn't have hardware that supported the AWS bands. And the new iPhone is going to have that custom hardware that allows for the AWS bands to be supported. Coming up this next Thursday, Apple is going to be holding an event in New York. They say it's going to be an education event. And according to them, Steve Jobs was really into education and everything. So they're doing an education event that's most likely about iBooks. It's not going to be releasing any new hardware, iPad 3 or anything like that. So we're going to have to keep our eyes peeled. And I'm going to tell you in next week's edition of Rise Tech News about what happens at this Apple event. I'll have all the coverage next week. Well, anyways, guys, thank you guys for watching this week's Rise Tech News. And I'll be back every Friday, and I think next Friday I'll be doing an iTunes gift card giveaway. I'm going to be doing them possibly every Friday with this. So stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next video. Remember to like and subscribe, and remember to leave a comment if you have any questions. And remember, in the description below, I will have all the links to the news stories I just talked about. See you in the next one.